Prophet ﷺ has further told us that from that day, the angel Israfil has never bowed down. He has never blinked. Feeling that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may order him to blow into that horn before he's able to raise his head or before he is able to complete his blink. Therefore, his eyes are fixed upon the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala waiting for the command to blow. On that day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, O Israfil, blow into the horn. The hadith of Abu Hurairah continues by saying, the angel Israfil will blow into the horn and continue to blow in it, and he will not get time or require any rest. The sound from the horn will be so terrifying that all those in the heavens and earth will be traumatized upon its sound, except for those whom he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wishes to be spared from that terror. It has been reported in an explanation of this that when that sound comes, the people from whatever situation they're in will be paralyzed. As if 30,000 or 50,000 volts of electricity had been hit in their heads, they will be paralyzed. And from that point, everything will cease, which they used to call reality. The sound of that horn will send shock waves greater than that of the hydrogen bomb, the atomic bomb, or the neutron bomb throughout the universe, causing the entire environment to rupture and to go into convulsion and chaos everywhere. All the mountains will move from their place, turning into fluffs of cotton and moving like clouds, although before that, they were the most stabilizing elements of the earth. They will turn into a million pieces and eventually will scattered dust. The earth will begin to experience earthquakes in every place, splitting open and releasing hot lava and steaming gases. The oceans will boil and create gigantic tidal, tidal waves. The sky will become black and then the heavens as we know it will be rolled back and the color will change to copper red with no clouds. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us that the earth will be rolled up like a carpet or a scroll in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And on that day when the trumpet is sounded, young people who are strong and handsome will become suddenly old and their hair will turn white from the trauma and their bones will start to split and crack. On that day, parents will run away from their children. The children will run away from the parents. The mother who is nursing will abandon her child. The pregnant woman will abort. Every person will only be concerned about themselves on that terrible day. You will see the human beings as if they were in a drunken state. They will fall into a swoon and a state of delirium. Although, they will not actually be drunk. They will be terrified and paralyzed out of fear and trauma. Even the devil, Shaitan himself, who was given respite for disobeying the command of Allah, will be full of terror because he knows that this is the day of his final reckoning. He and his army of devils will flee to various corners of the world seeking to escape, but they will find no hiding place. The, the angels of Allah will chase them, trap them, and begin to administer beatings and punishments upon them. The human beings and the jinn will experience such pain and humiliation that they could never imagine. They will see the heavens rupture, and the stars will fall from their places, and nothing will remain in its place, including the earth itself. <coughs> remain. Allah will then say, Let death come to Jibra'il alayhi salam, Mikail alayhi salam, and the angels will carry the throne, and they will all die. Then Allah will ask the angel of death, alayhi salam, Who remains? The angel will answer, only you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is Hayyu Qayyum. Only you, Allah, and I. 